Welcome to the channel, everybody, anyone who's watching, thanks for coming by. So today I'm doing Kerbal Space Program. I have some Minmus mission where I have to build a new surface outpost. There's some of the stats there, I'll look at those when I'm building the ship. I haven't yet built it, of course. Time to build a new Minmus base. Yeah, awesome. And then uh, save somebody from the surface of Minmus. So most likely I would build a base at the same place that I would uh, rescue Majeli here. Here on the right hand side, Fizban sponsor GDA5. Many thanks to you. Shout out to you, Fizban. And to anyone else who's watching the channel, that's great because uh, I want to start trying out that game. I'll uh, start doing some streaming or uh, do some videos, see how it goes. Alright, I gotta look at the mm, base that I already have at Minmus here. Oh, I already have two bases, so this will be the third base also. Ah, uh, okay. So, I'd say Calgary is maybe twice as big then. Because if you had the fastest car and you did the ring road and you didn't have anything to stop you. Ah, okay. So that was a big ass mining mission. I. This probably won't suffice for what I'm doing down here. Let's let's look at the criteria. So, build a new service in outpost on Minmus. Uh, build a new outpost that has the docking port and can generate power. That's normal. Uh, have a facility. Okay, this is really big. Uh, supporting at least 20 kerbals. 5,000 units of ore. Okay, so it will need to be a miner. Have a cupola. Three scientists. Okay. Okay, this is a really extensive mission. It must have motorized wheels. Okay. You don't need uh, wheels on Minmus, but <laughs> there you go. Oh jeez, they still haven't finished that ring road? It's still in like the southwest there, they can't figure out who they want to offend building over. Like, are they gonna offend building over the rich people or over the um, reserve land, so... Yeah, I don't know, maybe they should build a tunnel then. <laughs> Like a really deep one, so under the water table, so the environmentalists don't get uh, bent out of shape. Okay. Ah, that's this is this would be a really heavy base because of the. I'm gonna delete the um. Let's delete the fairing. Let's put this into perspective. Where's the? Uh, there we go. So the thing with this base is it's quite big, and it could do do some mining, but. It has a really big fuel tank, which I don't need, so I'm just going to start from scratch. Which is awesome. Ah, yeah. Everyone's got to have their piece of the pie. Okay. Start off with the viewing cupola. There's one. Let's, uh put this sideways with the docking port facing up so I can get out of there. 20 kerbals. The biggest way to... I mean, the best... The most numerous kerbals are usually in the hitchhiker one. Oh, and there's also this one, isn't there? Okay, no, this, this is much more compact. I'm gonna do this. This has 16. This has one. Uh, I guess I'll put a command module. This has better controls on it. It'll be something like that. So you can cram 16 people in this module. It's, it's a bloated thing, but uh, let's put a fuel tank on there to... So I need to change the... I need an adapter to change the size down to the Mark III from the... Oh no, wait. This is Mark III and it needs to go to... Two, 2.5 I think. So that will go in there like that. And, oh, I don't want I want the the evenly angled one, not the uh, slanted one. Makes uh, symmetry a lot easier. <laughs> Looks like some kind of a bullet train thing going on here. There's a lot more things to add. Uh, so it's got 20 people already. It needs to hold, what, 5,000 units of ore? Okay, that's significant. Large holding tank, so I need... 
at least three of those. Plus another... Plus... I'll need some of these to like make up the rest of it. So I'll put like two of those on there and that will make 5100 fuel. Uh, or I mean... I need the ISRU unit as well. Is this? Oh, it doesn't have that name here. Okay, just a converter drone. This uh, processes ore into fuel and uh, liquid fuel, oxidizer, and motor propellants. And uh, maybe xenon as well if you're in a xenon place. These can just be plopped on the side. I'm gonna change this down here, press R to make it uh, sym symmetry. Alright, just gonna double check the values. 1500 times 3 is 4500, plus another 600 is 5100. Yeah, so that's that done. Fear and Kapola done. Three scientists. Okay, so it wants three scientists, but then there's no science place. So what I'll do is I'll just land the scientists, then I'll return them to the base, because there's not much more science to be had on Minmus. I mean, maybe if I go into different regions or whatever. Okay. Let's rotate this sucker around. Can never get, can never intuitively pick the right one, so it's always like two or three presses before I get the right one. Yeah, up and down on those. Okay, so definitely need miners. Doesn't really matter. Okay, let's have a look at the weight profile. So this is 4.5 tons. I'm guessing these uh, ore tanks are much lighter. Oh, two tons. So this is it's going to be heavier on this side by about two tons. So I'm going to go over here. One point five, perfect. So if I put these over here, a bit closer to the center of mass, uh, two of them, of course. Are these facing in? No, okay. So hopefully those are good there. Every. Uh, Core operation needs thermal. You need to disperse the thermals. You can't actually build on this conversion unit. It's one of the downsides of it, but you can build over it, kind of like that. And of course, that's ugly, so let's rotate that just a little bit. Shift to do incremental rotation. And let's try to move it away from the. That should be fine. And let's have another set of these. These, please, just regulars. Put them right there. And because they have radiators, oh, you need some manual radiators in case these like break or something. So, yeah, I'll put them on the bottom. These wouldn't be enough to cool down the shit. The uh, the miners anyway, so, you know, they're just there, it's kind of a backup, but they're not a very effective backup. These are like way more effective. Okay, so for that I will need solar panels, of course, again, because I have big radiators, I need big, big solar. Hopefully I don't have to come out of this uh, docking port. How's the weight on this thing so far? 60 tons? Yeah, it could be worse. I don't necessarily need fuel in here though, so that probably cut down the weight as well. There we go, I got rid of 25 tons just in fuel. I could land this with uh, ore and complete the mission right away, but what I want, I'd, I'd actually prefer to do the mining on site. Uh, I need electrical, so I think it's a bit heavier over here, I'm guessing. Let's turn on the... So that's quite... It's quite well balanced. Okay. We're 
regardless. Put that here. Does that shift it a lot? Yeah, it does a bit. Eh? Alright. Let's take his out. This is Puppy on the other side. The building interface still sucks. Like, you can't properly zoom around and zoom in and zoom out. It's almost like they expected you to only build tiny shuttles for the game because that's what it's really effective for. Maybe medium sized rockets, but large stuff, you're just kind of like, too bad for you, boohoo. Okay, put in some auxiliary. Press the wrong button there. Okay, uh, solar here. So, just in case you uh, end up in a dark place, you can't even open your solar panels. <laughs> oh, this thing... Yeah, it's not going to fly. It's uh, going to be flown. I guess the main purpose is just to make it as aerodynamic as I can, so I can strap it to another rocket. Okay, let's turn off symmetry mirror and put on a bunch of these. Oh, I must have pressed the wrong button there somewhere. Ah, there it is. Put some science, a little bit of science on here. Everything should have a temperature gauge. One is enough. Let's put it... There. On a surface scanning module, I usually put these next to the uh, what do you call it? The miners. I'll get it eventually. <laughs> uh, anything else I want on there? Maybe a seismic detector. Maybe a gravioli detector. The weight is pretty much negligible, so I just put them all on one side. I need a remote control. Always good to build a base remote control. I don't need a large one, so I can put it on top of here. Maybe. Oh. I need communications. Don't need major communications, so I think I'll just put this on here. Extend it to make sure that it's not clipping stuff. Large docking ports there. Just strap you on there. Uh, pull that in a bit so it's not so far out. Cool. Those will be the legs. Minmus is a light, kind of a light, uh, what do you call it? Like a low gravity place, so you don't need to have like major shock absorbing. Just using the L2 landing struts just because they're the biggest. Then I can standardize on all my ships. That enables me, you know, good weight distribution. If I was putting something on the moon, I would has heavy gravity. I might put in another uh, pair of landing struts. Um, and if I was going somewhere like Eve, that's a whole different ballgame. Okay. Clamp, Botrons, where are you? You should be there. Set of bigs on the sides. That way, if I expand this base, it's using the big clampertrons instead of the small ones. Put some supports in there because it helps distribute the weight a little bit better. One is enough. If you put too many parts on your ship, as you know, the game just starts going freaking haywire. Let's add clamps on the front. Maybe I should add, add the grabby on the front. Never know when you need a grabby, let me tell you. Sometimes, right, if you're clipping on here like this, it shows only one, and when you press it, it should say one. But occasionally, like, if you have, uh, like, two, this basically shows two units. It's going to place one on one side and one on the other. Then if you put it on a single node, it usually will put in one, but occasionally, 
you will put in two, and then you'll end up with like some really weird mass profile or clipping going on. So you can always press X to take that away to make sure it's already set to one. It stops the game from freaking out. And who knows, maybe they fixed that bug, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Alright, so grabby means I can just grab anything and dock to it. And then uh, got the uh, clampertrons for the regular, or be the re smaller vessels. This also helps with staging, because that means I can affix to the rocket better. And these are, of course, the best, most reliable ones. Now, the question is, how do I get myself down on the planet? Okay, this is the part that I have trouble with. Uh, I think I have to build the main rocket first, and then attach this separately. Let me think here. No, I should be able to do it like this, okay. Coupling. So getting down to Minimus, we'll need some kind of rocket staging. This is pretty heavy by now. Oh, 40 tons. Could be worse. Nope, wrong one. There you go. Pair these up. So there should be one on each side. I don't want to clip that um, clampertron, basically. that just a little bit. Yeah. Build stru structure on that. I think a triple would be fine. Yep. A little long actually. I might not even need to do that. Putting of course like you got you got long structure uh, structural things. What do you call these things? Girders. Then your thrust is further out to the side which makes it a little harder to control. Okay. Yeah, that's much better. So I should be, uh, yeah, I'll be able to blow that out after landing or just before landing? After landing. Before landing. Whenever I want, basically. Uh, oh, I forgot I need to add a little bit of a monopropellant. That can also help with the landing. Where's the big monoprops? Monoprop, where are you? Let's go slowly through here. Is it the big ones? 50s, no. Where is it? Where's the fat ones? Mom. 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 Okay. I thought there were bigger ones than this. 275. What the hell? There was another one like this that was bigger. Don't tell me they deleted that. That'd be weird. Anyway. Oh, that's too big, isn't it? 120. Yeah. How's the mass now? Gonna put a couple more of these on here. Just like kind of center the mass if possible. Let's put it out here a bit more. So basically I'm trying to get that yellow ball lined up with the middle. I mean if it's not perfect it's fine. I mean it should be fine. <laughs> Famous last words right? Oh, gonna have to retract these suckers. Otherwise when you fly they'll be, uh, they'll be right there with you. I don't need an extreme uh, landing system here. Would this be enough? It should be enough. Well, hard to say. It's kind of asking for trouble. Maybe what I'll do is. Ah, I see, so put in a half tank or something. And half tank over here. Alright, let's just max this out. Okay. Kind of center that. 
run a fuel line because uh, since I've been uh, updating the game it seems like fuel doesn't work properly anymore so I'm gonna run a fuel line right to the tank that way this is draining out as the ship is landing now to build a rocket to land it with I just need something easy going okay this is 1.5 tons maybe not necessary was this What is the ISP? So, if you look here, the... oh jeez. Stay with me. It's not gonna stay with me, is it? I want this to... I'm trying to get this screen to stay up here. And it's not letting me. Eh. Anyway. Um, this is engine thrust at ASL and VAC, so... Okay, no. Engine ISP. That's basically the efficiency of the engine. The higher the number, the better it is. So, ASL is basically when you're on Kerbal Kerbin, when uh, you're at sea level. And also planets like high gravity planets like EVE or some of the bigger moons. So, uh, the ASL is what takes you off the ground, usually. Where is the vac? The vacuum ASL? Oh, the ISP. I think it means uh, something specific pulse, like ignition, ignition specific pulse. I, I can't remember. But uh, th so this is a 355, which is pretty good. So if I look at this one, uh, look, the Reliant, it's 310 in the vacuum. So that would be less efficient. Um, what else do I have? I'm looking for another small engine. The Terrier, okay, so the Terrier's 345 is pretty good. It's really light, but the thrust in a vacuum is only 60 kilonewtons. Whereas the Cheetah is double that. So double that for... Okay, so it's kind of like... It's basically double a Terrier. Except it has a better um, ISP. So Cheetahs are a newer... Uh, what do you call it? A newer engine to the game. So I'm gonna try to find the fuel for that. What what is the measurement on that? It doesn't tell me here. Okay, so I just need to look for the f <laughs> the right fuel tank. I'm not sure where they put that. Uh, it's not the one I was just looking at was this one, right? It needs to be bigger than that. Maybe under size, from big to small. Okay. Is this the one? Alright, so that's a... okay. That's the cheetah, which means I'm gonna drop the fuel back in here, since the fuel capacity on this one is a little way bigger than the other fuel tanks I had on there. I'm not sure why this is all the way back there. Best thing to do here would be to center this puppy. I mean, the better thing to do. Maybe not the best. Who knows what the best is? Usually not me. Okay. Run the fuel lane. Back out here in case I change my mind, I guess. This thing will pop off once I blow this uh, coupler. Engines blow. I mean, engines fire before coupler is off. That's good. Oh. I have a... Uh, what do you call them? Monopropellant, but I don't actually have a monopropellant system. Oh, I just remember something that I need to say out loud before I forget, and that's uh, I need to put wheels on this thing. I think basically you just need to like throw one wheel on here, but I'm gonna put this here. Try not to. Come on, don't be like that. There you go. Try not to clip too much with the structure. It's... I don't need major water propellant on here. It's just added there just for extra. Okay, uh, right, the wheels. Wheels, wheels, wheels. And... This thing even. Would this, like, land on the belly? I think it would, wouldn't it? Well, there's one way to check. Take this down here. And you can clip with the ground to see what's going on. Just there. 
Okay. See that? It will it will contact the ground. So wheels, yeah. Uh, I think I'll just put dummy wheels on here. You can actually move the vehicle with the mono propellant. So so let me go. Oh I just remember something else. I want reaction wheels. Large ones. So on low gravity places you can use the yeah, you can basically use that. Use the reaction wheels to your advantage to help move around. This is, comes in important when you're landing, but also when you are um, uh, moving around on the planet too. Let's bring you in. Still looks like it would scrape the bottom, but hey, yeah, well, I'll trust the science. Where was that? Right wheels. Still procrastinating on those wheels. I've got shitty wheels to put on here. Maybe I could make me stop it from bottoming out. There's always that, right? A rover wheel. <laughs> hmm. Does it need to touch the wheels under the ground? Does it have like some requirement like that? Come on. There you go. All right. Um, uh, must be on motorized wheels, okay, so the wheels need motors, and it might need to be on them. Now, I don't mean, I don't know if it means, like, the structure itself needs to be on the wheels, like, the base needs to be on the wheels, or if the wheels need to be on the ground and the base on the wheels. So... Be a little bit uh, liberal with how I figure that out because otherwise the mission is just a waste of time. Okay. Yep, that actually works out okay. Except I'm going to do a little bit of fudging. You can't cut the beams, but you can put them into the into the um, the cupola here. Then rotate this sucker. Okay, that's not gonna work because the wheel won't be anywhere near the ground, so I'm gonna drop this down. Hopefully that doesn't nullify the uh, ISP. <laughs> Uh, something this heavy landing on those tiny wheels, even on a low gravity moon, it might break them. But uh, that should be enough to satisfy the mission criteria. Now, the best practice is to just go from top to bottom and then go through all the things that you may or may not need to uh, for your mission or what have you. This helps you stop. Like, to this helps avoiding the forgetting problem. Uh, I can add some uh, things to the inventory if you have uh, the Kerbal inventory system. So there's one seat here. Let's see if I can add a screw uh, power power drill, um, a wrench, fuel canister, the instruction manual. So it's good to have. Let's bring some music because you know. Oh, better have some beer. Maybe more of those. Let's bring a uh, let's bring a case of beer and a ball. Oh, who knows? Maybe I need to blow some up. <laughs> All right, I got another inventory over here where you can put some more serious stuff. So the, the uh, drill and the wrench are basically allow me to attach this stuff. So why would I need stuff in here? Well, let's say I uh, lost a few solar panels. Is that four of those? Nope. I have a couple of batteries. Looks like I can only... Can I build, put another one in there? Is it... Oh yeah, a couple of batteries. That's the zero inventory. Uh, what other things might you need? Communications, of course, like 
if your aerial gets destroyed. Let's have a let's put a temperature gauge. Uh, no. Um what else? Cargo. I could build a science operation here, but I don't feel like doing that. That's a whole different thing. Um What is this? Utility. Oh, they throw in some other stuff in there. Have an illuminator, which reminds me, of course, that's why we go from top to bottom. You need illumin well, in my opinion, it's a great idea to put illuminators. In other words, lights. Come on. I'm not sure which is the right one. There it is, okay, so. It's always good to light your way. I'll be landing okay, yeah, I'll be landing in this direction, so I'm gonna put a pair of them here. And Oh. The clampatron is missing on the front. I didn't put it back on, I guess. <laughs> One is enough on that side. Do I still have it out here? I don't even know where it is. Okay, it's not coupling. Yeah, it is. Grab. Alright, because I got it on size. That's why I don't see it. Okay, there you go. Where was I? Yeah, lights, okay. I uh, will put them on the side here, because docking without lights can be tricky sometimes. Ooh, there we go. Actually, I can just do that on mirror, right? Yep. Alright, so I got some lights to make landing easier. Cargo, science, uh, comms, electrical. I can put one of these in here. In case I want to build a, uh, you could actually build like a little rover if you had enough uh, material. And thermals. Nah, can't be bothered to put a radiator. Ooh, wheels, tiny wheels. I could build one of these. Hey. You not going in there for me? Don't you normally go in there? Oh, maybe they're too big. We'll find that. I will build wheels. How about you? Ah. Let me check that out. Okay, so somehow unselected, so I'm gonna open it back up. Let's try that. Tiny wheels. Why aren't you cooperating with me? That's weird. I'm not even holding that thing. Maybe the game's glitching. Oh, that's fine. I didn't want to add any more stuff anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, structural seems to seems to be fine. What else? Payload. Uh, right. So I will need to be. I need to build on a very big. Airstream protection. I need to cover those uh, engines basically. I'm gonna put this here and build that in a minute just to remind me. Coupler is fine. These things are really cool. I uh, haven't got the mastery of these yet but I can use you can use hinges so when you land you might be able to it's like you're, you're landing down like this you might want to put something on the ground like a rover you can hinge it and then drop it instead of having it just fall down to the ground like that uh, this of course some people build mechs with them and stuff and uh, you've also got rotors and other stuff and control units I'm not sure how it all works because I haven't had a mission advanced enough to worry about it um, command and control looks okay Rockets should be good. Oh yes. Yes, there is one more thing. Okay, so I'll be landing this way. Basically, this will be the butt. 
I cannot land on my whatever you want to call that the uh, the docking port so I need to put a buffer there I think even let's just do a structural thing oh no wonder my things are over there that's weird it does that sometimes is it back okay now it's back sort of back uh, okay, that's too big. Uh, smaller one of those. How about that? It's not a bad idea. I've never tried this for landing before, but these things are lighter than fuel tanks, so... This will just buffer the... Uh, the impact. The, the, the impact won't destroy the uh, coupler. It will be mostly... yeah. Restricted to that area. Okay, uh, let's have a couple of these. So later on, I'll just detach that after landing. That should be it, except for this. So this is how it's going to go into space and land. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure where the upside is. Okay, now I can see the problem now. Yep. All right. Okay. That won't work. Let me show why it won't work. <laughs> it has more than one node in the bottom, which means it won't snap to the center, and of course you always want to keep everything centered. If you don't have center, then you have a bad structure. Okay. Try this. Nope, I don't like that either. Got a structural tube. No, that's too that's too far. So Going back to the fuel tank. Okay. That's just fine. Is that the one? Eh, wrong. Let's try this. That should be fine. Let's dump the fuel out of that. I'll do that in a minute. We need to put the what do we strut connectors back on. And of course we need some structure in here as well to just keep the ship. If you if you allow it just on this connection, it can there can be sway or even really bad sway. Okay, zoom out time if it allows me to. Okay, that's as far as it allows me. I'm gonna change the route to here because uh, later on I'm gonna save this uh, as a assembly. I'll show you what that means. Ah, oh, good. It allows me to be liberal with that. Okay. That should be fine. Let's start fairing that up a bit. Check the... You don't want to clip your... What do you call it? Your fairings? Because then it just... It can cause things to explode later on. Have this go up here. This allows for, of course, better aerodynamics. And yeah, it looks a bit neater too. I don't suppose I could change the color. It changes. Oh, oh, there you go. Now it's got color. <laughs> now it looks like a bumblebee. What else do I have here? Oh, that looks like some kind of Iron Maiden or something. Ooh. Some retro. Okay, let's go for retro today. Alright, and you also have to do the settings on here. So, uh, you usually don't need a huge injection force because what happens is if you blow these sides out, too fast they can just like damage things in its path and if some reason it blows out the wrong way it could actually damage your protect the the very components you're trying to protect and that's just bitching and this is also a stage thing so I just put that on a separate stage so um, the only time you would need a high ejection force would be like 
if you need to blow it out for some reason, like as you're going through an atmosphere, or heavy gravity or some situation like that, or you really need to like send the pieces flying away. But I usually wait until I'm in uh, no atmosphere, and then I blow it out. So that way it would just float away. I prefer tram shell deploy. And that should be good. Okay. So I'm going to say this is an assembly. This is an advanced option, in case you don't know. Uh, simple mode, advanced mode. Advanced mode allows you to build sub-assemblies. These are just robots. Okay. I used to have them all. You can add new subcategories, but I just put them all in here mostly because 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 who cares why. All right, I'm going to bring up this profile here. This shows me the mass. And I'm gonna drop it in here. I'm gonna call this Minmus uh, Base 3A. So the base is the the whole the whole facility will be base three, right? This module is 3A. So as I expand it, I'll be able to look down here at my my lists here and see, right? Like okay, so for example, Minmus Base is one and two both have uh, second expansions on them so that minimus two has a and b that allows me to like so let's say i want to build t uh, c i can look at a and b to see what docking ports and stuff they have without having to go all the way over to the base but sometimes i need to go over to the base and just see what the situation there is on the ground and of course it's just good to check everything make sure you have like basically the same docking ports so they can dock together um, and the same kind of uh, mass and uh, volume profiles. It also matters like where you're putting your um, your landing struts, right? So I always put mine on the center of, of, the, of the structure and using LT2 struts. That way you should always be able to dock your vehicles together. But like, let's say you wanted to build your struts like further down or further high, or for higher up on the vehicle, then you always need to refer back to the original structure to match that. Because if you don't match that, you're gonna have like docking like this, and good luck. Because <laughs> then you're, <laughs> it's just all gonna be out of line. Uh, I put some information in here because uh, sometimes when you're building your ship it's critical to know exactly what the mass is like so for example if I needed to send this module up alongside another one like if I was building a super rocket I would need to have 94 on one side and around 94 on the other side otherwise when your rocket goes up it's gonna be like like that it's gonna fall apart not fall apart it's gonna flip upside down and with uh, heavy rockets that's really important uh, and I just do things like this, like uh, M, M doc, L docs, grabby, just information that I can see at a glance. So you can see it on the, uh, yeah, the left hand side here. What other things? It's a miner, so it has all the associated mining equipment. Um, yeah, I don't bother mentioning how many passengers it is because it just, it's just based on whatever the the, the uh, entire facility is on. Um, doesn't really have that much for comms, so that's not important. It doesn't have a science facility. There you go. That's enough information, I think. Yep. Now I have Minmus Base Tree A. I'm gonna call this Minimus Base 3 Launch. So this saves to my general save file over here. Yeah, so this general save here. Whereas the sub assemblies are like mini saves that you can drop in at any time. I'm gonna build a dedicated uh, rocket to this, so I'm not gonna rehash a former launch set. So since this is a heavy rocket and I have a very big plate here which can uh, which I can detach from here 
the best thing I think would be to just get the uh, largest fuel tanks. Where are they? Around here. And just pop it on there. I don't have a 5 meter rocket. This is what, 4 meters? S3. I have S4s, even better. Yeah, there you go. Boom. S4s, which I th are 5 meter, uh, right? 5 meters? If this is a 5 meter, this is also 5 meter. So that's some serious uh, fuel right there, which is going to be damn heavy. I think I will just need... We're already going to Minmus. I'm going to be basically overspending on how I get here, but uh, I'm not NASA. I don't have to report to the uh, government of the people of the United States of America or anyone like that. I can overspend as much as I like. It means less hassle. I'm sure NASA engineers would like that as well. They also got a team of geniuses figuring out math and cut down costs. I ain't doing all that, let me tell you. I need the the big ass rocket. Oh no, there's no big ass rocket for this. There's no rocket for the S4. Uh, so basically you need an adapter for it. So yeah, back to here. And this is the simplest way to adapt for an engine and then put a rhino on it. I don't need more thrust. Like if I was going sending a heavier rocket up or going further, I would you can also put uh, these things, the vectors. Those will give you okay, so the the thrust there is a thousand kilonewtons in space, so you four of those. Whereas a rhino is two thousand, so you're actually getting double the thrust with this. And if you're greedy triple your thrust like that, but I don't need that. That's fine. And the AI isn't smart enough to figure out your staging, but it tries to anyway and fails, so you have to move uh, move your thrust around. Okay, so that's... This is what will hopefully get me from low cur carbon orbit to minimus orbit, and Probably some of the way down. That's a lot of thrust. And how much? Two thousand? Yeah. Okay. So that's basically. I don't need that much thrust. I'm like carrying fuel into space, which doesn't need that much carrying. Is this is a fuel. More thrust. Oh, there's gonna be more. It's gonna be delicious amounts of fuel to come. Okay. Let's get this down to one so I don't duplicate. See like 1700 of thrust down here, that's enough to get to Minmus, even if the rest of the rocket wasn't, uh, if it was already detached. So now that this is the inline rocket, this itself would have good uh, symmetry, like you can check here. If your yellow ball is like out, out here, good luck, your ship's going to fly around in a circle. Um, you can press this one to get your thrust, thrust should always be pushing the mass, so this down force should be pushing into that. If it starts getting too close or over here, then it starts whee, flipping around. And when you're on a planet with um, aerodynamics, you got the aerodynamic overlay, but there's nothing going on right now, so that's a blue icon. So the thrust is right here. I mean, the center of mass is right here, which is not actually ideal. I'd like it below this plate. Below. So I'm gonna like just... There you go. That's better. Now the reason that is, is because now that I'm... This is all in line, it has good symmetry, I'm gonna start building out. Building out means... Oh yeah, basically you start off with your three dimensions like locked in right here, where you want the mass, and... Coupling these because they give me X. These are the strongest attachers, but they always end up like, like you got all these like little parts of the fuel tank sticking out. So yeah, I go with these. I think a four is probably sufficient for this rocket because we're going to Minimus. We're not going to Eve or Duna. Put these on a separate, separate stage earlier is better than later. And start with girders. This also steel beams, but I'm gonna go with these. 
Now, I need... I would... I might need to clear this. I might not. It depends how much mass I can get between... <laughs> I want to stop that thing from... Uh... Off. All right. Yeah, so... It's like, if I can get all the mass in here for the rocket, then I won't need to build out further. But let's say if I start clipping this... Then I'll have to like make it out further, and that makes the rocket harder to control. So that should probably be okay, though. I okay. What do I do now? S threes maybe. Those are pretty beefy already. And I'm curious, can I put this on top? Oh, that's funny. All right. Oh, that's the uh, wrong adapter. Let's put the adapter on there. Live a little dangerously, make your bottom heavy. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the ass later. And rockets. So... My ISP on the Rhino is... 340. If I want to get off the, off the ground, these are pretty decent, so... I think I'll just strap a bunch of these on. They got... Good simple option just to... Threw me out. Hmm. Okay, let's finish building the fuel tanks. I'm just gonna build round ones, round adapters, roundy round rounds. Is that the right size? Getting close, but it should be fine. And then cap that off with. I gotta put the round ones on there. My instinct says round is better. Hey, they used to have blue ones. Yeah, whatever, that's fine. So you can start putting on uh, other fixtures like uh, struts, what do you call these? Uh, strut connectors and fuel lines, but when I'm building a rocket this complex, actually, we'll do it at the end. Um, that itself probably most likely wouldn't get anywhere, so. Basically, I need a bunch of friends. So, keeping around the original center of mass, so around here, not following the new one, which is adjusted because of this fuel tank, but following the original one, I'm going to put on booster rockets. Um, so, I'm already up to a thousand tons. My better bet would either be the Pollux or the Clydesdale. So, the Clydesdale is huge. Uh, it's... Let me look at the thrust here. 1300. Okay, the thrust is huge, but it's also really, really heavy. Uh, it does have gimbal. So gimbal means... It can actually change the direction of the ship. So that can be a benefit. But... I am going to try to build the Pollux instead. Because I think that might be more suitable for what I'm doing. All right, I think you need to build an aerodynamic cap on it, which should be these. And it looks like some kind of phallic device now. <laughs> okay, make sure that it's not off. So I got a basically I got a line of uh, mass or structure that goes. It's a straight line from here to the center of the rocket, so I have to make sure that it's not off center. The boosters, of course, always go first. So this, okay, this is in the wrong place. I'm gonna put this on its own stage. This is the couplers, and put the boosters here. They should all fire together. Now I'm gonna duplicate this because one is not enough. It's Kerbal Space Program. We always need more. All right. I'm having a look here. The thrust is a bit high. This is the problem with this fuel tank. But maybe I'll be fine. Maybe. Maybe. So attach this to your uh, parent. And... I'm going to drop the thrust a little bit. Maybe to 90%. So it can go for a little bit longer. 
If I was using the Clydesdale, the bigger one, I would drop it to like 80%. Before I build out more uh, of these, I'm going to basically duplicate these. I'm going to do fuel tank, uh, fuel line staging. Okay. So you have to set it down to one because it, it won't understand what you're trying to do. Basically. I want to build like this uh, booster set around here, so I'm going to build like maybe five per rocket here. So I'm going to connect it to the, uh, the belly side here. So as this rocket is firing, it will also be sending its fuel over here. As this rocket is firing, it's going to send its fuel into this main rocket. That way while this one is firing, this one will always be full, and then while this one is firing alone, this one will always be full. And basically the same thing on the other side. I don't believe there's any, there's no symmetry way of doing it, so you have to do them all individually. Alright. Now it's time to put some struts in before I forget, otherwise your ship's gonna be jelly. Okay. Let's attach it to that on the bottom. If your ship has significant mass, you can also put them here as well. That will uh, keep it doubly secure. Now there are ways of using uh, this auto strut thing. Yeah, I have no idea how it works. So it's supposed to make things easier uh, and use less strutting and all this other stuff. But uh, I even looked on a couple of looked up a couple of videos, but I didn't find one that was really helpful how to make it work. In other words, I just went back to my original experience of the game to how to build the struts, which adds more parts. So my parts are two seventeen, basically around four to five hundred on my computer than the rocket. Will start to slow down the game. Uh, where was it? Yeah, okay, so I got that going. <sighs> Let's just build out the boosters. Now, the boosters should always be in line with each other. If you don't have them in line with each other, what happens is you'll create a spiral effect. The, uh, the rocket will start doing this. A mild variation like that should be okay. It's not beautiful, but it's a bit hard, a bit difficult to get them all lined up properly. Of course, I can just match this height over here, like so. It's up. Oh no, it's down by the slightest degree. Uh, just like that, maybe. All right. So what I've got so far. I don't think it will get me into space. Like, I think I'm going to need a couple of more uh, Pollux around here, but I would like to try it out before that. So I'm going to shift click this down, bring it down to Earth. Oh yes, I just remembered something. I need a, I need an RV to get me back. So I'm going to save this. Let's have a look at my RVs. So I need a, a Minmus Lander RV. Minmus Lander. Do I have a Minmus LKO Mini Lander? two people. It's a little lander I have here. It's basically using this uh, two pod and yeah, it worked last time so I don't think I'll have any problems. How am I gonna... Gonna put this. I don't. If I could put it on here, that would be ideal. Hopefully, this doesn't unbalance things. I mean, it will, but hopefully, not too bad. So, I'll be sending three scientists and a pilot. All right. Time to just delete the staging because it will most likely be uh, clipped anyway. So, just delete that. Oh, what did I just do? Okay, yeah. All right. 
I don't think I have a separator on there, so I need to put another separator. Okay. Uh, the regular 25, right? Oh, no. 18? Cool. I'm going to put this on backwards. I have no idea when this staging will be needed. It's probably up there somewhere. And I need an adapter, structural adapter. Is it that? Nope. 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 Did they build one for this? Eh. That's not very nice. Did you guys make one for me or not? I don't think that the game developers made one because this is a newer rock, uh, newer size. So yeah, they probably just didn't bother. All right, want to rotate this so that it's further away from the fairing. Should be there. Oh, nope. I'm going to change my mind because it shall not touch the docking port. Things touching docking ports, besides other docking ports, is bad. Alright. The reason I prefer to have two small rockets on the side, it, sh it might be better, or hopefully it's better than having another one on top here. Another one on top means the rocket ends up getting longer and longer, and then it's, it's usually harder to balance as you get taller rather than... Uh, rather than shorter. Okay, that should be enough structure there. Just a simple one. Yeah, you have to separate all these uh, stages. I'll figure all of those out later. Is that... You see this uh, kind of graphical clipping here? That's something to be concerned about. It might have... Yeah, it was... It was clipped into the uh, into the structure here, which could create some kind of ghost in the machine. All right. So that allows me to get my scientists back. There's no reason for them to stay on Minmus because there's no there's no science base there. And if I put a science module in here, it's going to become longer and un unbalanced and potentially unmanageable. So let's build the fairing back out. Let's try that. There. You have to go even bigger. There we go. That's a mighty, that's a mighty fine fairing you got there. And let's bring it back in. Boom. And there you go. All right. So, so it's good to just check around your fairing. Let's turn off this thing. Make sure nothing's clipped out of it. Because if you blow the fairing piece out and it's attached to an object, you can actually like rip it off. And quite often it does. All right. <laughs> now, if the rocket's unbalanced, I could, I could uh, take the fuel out of this these landers and put it into the main body. That's what I should do. Yep. By keeping the fuel in the main body, it keeps balance better. Okay, so I need one. I need okay, one hundred and ten. Let's just say 100, 200, 300, 400. So I need 800 fuel. I'm going to put 800 fuel in here. That's fine, I think. Oh, 800 liquid fuel. Let's put 900 in there. And I'm going to lock it out so it doesn't get drained. And I'm going to drop this off so the balance of the ship isn't so ugly. Because you can't trust anything in Kerbal, you have to check over here to make sure that it's uh, taking the fuel out of here as well. Alright, so... Hmm. Hopefully I can land properly on... Even if I could land on this engine plate, that would be fine. Then I can basically pop off these landers and land them, I think, manually. Yeah, it has a remote control guidance unit. Doesn't have us. I don't see like little aerials on them. That could be bad. 
I got the big ones, but I want to back up Ariel on there, basically. Let's put it... Where do I want to put it? Ooh, let's put it here. What if I can get it, like, pointing straight up? Eh. Eh. It's like I have to, like, I'm pushing my mouse like this and holding the mouse wheel down just to uh, get it to zoom in because, yeah, they haven't figured this interface out. All right. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. All right, so the other thing you can do is just toggle off the snap and just get that sucker perfect. It's not the end of the word if you don't, but I just feel like being proper about it today. Should be one on the other one too, just for fun. Okay, backup aerial, good. Batteries, should be fine. Put solar panels. <laughs> Oh, you don't have a. Uh, you don't have parachutes. I wonder if I can get you home. Do I have a separator? Nope. All right, I'm gonna put parachutes on this. It's designed just to get into uh, minimus orbit. It's actually not designed to get home, but I'm curious as to whether it can go home because there's quite a bit of thrust on there. I mean, if I got it landed, no. Do I need the grabbies? I don't need that. I'm gonna replace you with parachutes. Oh, these parachutes aren't gonna do much, are they? <laughs> I need the. Yeah, the Mark 25 should be fine. Ooh, mushroom head. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea if that's gonna be good or not. Alright. Let's turn off the fancy fairing. Alright. One thing I have to do is also go back to the staging, so looking at your uh, your fuel here, the arrows point the direction the fuel is going, so this couple couplers have to come off first. Well, not first. The first ones are the Pollocks, the boosters, but then it's going to be this. So those should be opposites. These will come off first, in theory. There we go. So, if the calculation is correct, which it usually isn't, after I blow these out, then there should be another 1600 meters per second of delta V. Alright, and let's add stability. I mean, stabilizers. You know, these things. Oh, there's another thing I could do aerodynamics. If I have room, you can put, I mean, if you have room, you can put these on. And it allows for, it helps control takeoff. It adds a little bit of mass, so. Yeah, that's fine. I think I'll just add four here. Put your snap back on if you want to get it nice and centered. So now the blue has the, uh, what do you call this? The aerodynamic overlay. This has its own aerodynamics, so by putting the fins down there, it helps keep control of the ship here, rather than some random surface control over the, uh, the aerofoil thing there. Um, double check my thrust. It's a bit high. Might have to uh, reconsider that. Best place to put your... Um, what are these things? What the hell is this? Stability enhancers, frames or whatever, is right near the center of mass again. Because what it does is, if you put it down here, it's it's uh, better at supporting the inline rocket, but then it, it won't be better at supporting this. So you put it in line with the, uh, the couplers in your whole center of mass, it will also reduce any sway that might happen out here. Uh, let's just show you down here. And because this is a heavy beast, alt click. I can put it here too. Um, sometimes you have to put them on here too, but that means you've got a real extreme rocket going on, or just bad engineering. So that should be fine. I'm gonna check my rocket staging. Where are you? Yep. So I'm just I'm just looking down here to make sure that they're all gonna be firing at the same time. Boom. Yep. Boom. Can I reorder these? Does it allow me to do that? Yeah, it does. Okay. 
I don't want any unexplained uh, rockets going off. Because sometimes what happens is one of these uh, later stage rockets on your other ship might have like somehow sneaked down to the bottom here. And so it'll like be burning while you're up here. Yeah, it's just, it's just great. Alright, let's see whether I have enough people for this mission. Probably not. Nope. <laughs> I have one pilot. And I need some scientists. Uh, yeah, that sucks. Okay, that means I have to buy some people. So I'll go down to the astronaut complex. This can get expensive. It increases by some kind of exponential degree here. Yeah, you can be stupid. Oh, okay. The hires don't go up exponentially anymore. And a courageous guy. All right. Is there a way to go back to the VAB from here? So I have a whole bunch of noobs. Oh, I'm right back at it. Cool. Oh, and I have another mission. I almost forgot, didn't I? I have a Tesla stack separator landed at Kerbin, right? A TS-37. Okay, so let's throw some uh, scientists in here. They're just for the mission. They don't have any particular purpose. Alright. Stack separators should be here. TS-37. There you go. <laughs> that... Where is that? That can be done even before the rocket launches. So it doesn't cause any problems. Just a little way to, you know, complete a mini-mission and... I don't have to worry too much about it. Are you, are you going to stay there? Thank you. All right. To perform the test, activate the part through staging sequence when all test conditions are met. Yeah, okay, so... I think we have kind of a yellow light here to test out the rocket. Here we go. That took... <laughs> an hour and 20 minutes to build. Alright, so the uh, control direction is aiming from the front, I mean from the bottom docking port, which is useless. Do a back flip. <laughs> I'm going to try controlling from here, hopefully it's not too... F if, it's, uh, if it's basically too far away from... Uh, let's say if I'm controlling up here, it can create some weird conditions out here. So if it creates too weird of a condition, what I can do is uh, put a control, uh, a remote control here, which means I can control the ship from here, which is better, but hopefully I don't have to do any of that. Um, just pick any old fuel tank from here and here, pin them here so that you can get ready on your staging. Put your Pollux down here, and hopefully everything's in good order. Turn on the SAS to help with stability control. It's a nice sunny day. Oh, I forgot to clean up the debris. Still looking trashy out there. Okay, so besides doing a back backflip for Fizban, which might happen, <laughs> uh, I need to like try to rely on this thrust earlier on because it's less efficient when you're in space. Okay, shift to go up. Alright, good. Yeah, I forgot about that. That mission's complete. Ah, that's a good sign. I'm going up. <laughs> Already at 50 meters per second. Gonna cut down a little bit of the speed. At 150, I'll go down again. This is dropping faster than this, so eventually I need to... Uh, I need this to uh, detach before this one. I'm still going up pretty good. Yeah, okay, so that's not working for me right now. I will have to cut down to half. It's still not enough. Let's get it up to 350. And let's cut it right down. 
It's always good to maintain a little bit of thrust down here because uh, it keeps your gimbal, so basically your actuation or direction control. All right, this is starting to catch up now. This might not be enough, because I'm gonna be dropping this uh, stage first, this might be not enough to get me into space. I had a feeling that was gonna happen. That's about as low as I can drop it. They're gonna be detaching similar distances apart. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Always want the boosters to go off first because they're on the outside. that. This will be a really quick burn. Cut thrust, mark. Let's get rid of those rockets. Oh dear. Why am I swaying? I don't want to be swaying. Alright. Ah oh, yeah, I'm already into the atmosphere. This is great. Maybe this is enough. Okay, so into the map view. I want to... Am I going the right way? Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Okay. I need to be going towards 90. I guess my docking port was... I mean, my command module was flipped upside down. That could be a source of great inefficiency right there. Alright. Let's check my fuel. Okay, down to half. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it. Still dropping fast. Why am I zoomed all the way out of here, you bastards? Let's get around here. 103, that's pretty good. Alright, I'm gonna try to flatten that out. That's one minute away. I need to uh, maybe make that distance further away from here. Alright. Keeping it around the uh, horizon level. How long until I lose that? Pretty soon now. those. I want to get rid of this uh, fairing as well. Because it's just dead weight. When you're in space, I mean, you don't need it. So watch out for that piece there. There we go. A little bit of clip should be okay. All right, now it's full thrust. I'm going to lock on the prograde. And hopefully I have enough thrust to achieve orbit. Let's do a node. Alright. Yes, I should be able to make it, so... This is good. Okay, so I have 3,000 uh, data delta V. I know I need to drop a thousand. This is good news, good news, good news. Everything's going well. If I had have added those extra pollexes, they would have been kind of useless. So yeah, uh, the burn time is two minutes and the node is a minute away, so since I'm already at a, this high, I, sh I should be able to meet it. I won't, won't be burning up today. Hooray! Okay, um, I don't need any staging right now, so I'm going to lock that. Alt L. Don't want to accidentally press the spacebar and say goodbye to some of your components, because... That's not nice. I'm just going to keep it right on the horizon for now. And eventually, we'll be going here. Set as a target. So, yeah, you know, like when you're... Yeah, thanks. It's like... When you're playing the game, this is, for me, like the most effective viewpoint, but from a viewer point of view, this is much more interesting. Where is the sun, is it? Where's Kerbal? Oh, there it is. Oh, cool. Let's 
give it give it some uh, perspective here. See if I can take a screenshot. Nope, it doesn't allow me to do it. So yeah, I think screenshots still aren't working. Maybe because I'm on my secondary monitor. Oh, I made orbit. Nice. Oh man. All that check-in and double-check-in actually paid off. You leaving planet or landing else were on it. Yeah, yeah I just, uh, I was at the Kerbal Space Center. I did a launch. Now, I've achieved orbit around the planet, so I won't be sinking and no burning up anymore. Now, I want to go to uh, Minmus over here. For that, I will probably go from here. I'm not sure. Let's pull out the, uh, this is basically the burn, the prograde burn. Can you modify a ship in orbit? I uh, usually no. You can uh, build onto it using docking parts by launching extra stages. Uh, however, with the mod, uh, Kerbal Attachment System, you can actually modify the ship in orbit. But I'm not super well versed with that mod. There it is. Contact with Minmus by using the moon. <laughs> Interesting. So I have to, I'll do a flyby of the moon, just a very brief one. And that's good because that will give my scientists extra experience. So I'm okay with that rather than having to send them back there again. Okay, let's try that. So the burn time is 34, uh, 1 minute 34 seconds. I need to div divide that by two. So uh, one Basically, 30 seconds plus 15 is uh, 45, plus another 2, 47. So this is a 47 second burn. This didn't drain, right? Okay, good. Actually, I should uh, disable crossfeed just in case, like I run out of fuel here for some reason that I don't want it to start draining out here without my permission. Oh! bit late on the burn, so that means I might not make a good orbit. Alright. But we do what we can. Hopefully it's okay. Here we go, off to Minmus. <laughs> so... If anyone's watching this channel now or in the future, I hope you're having a great day and enjoying the stream. Anytime you want to chat, just chime right in. Fizban, I hope you're having a good day too. How long until this? Okay, 13 days. That's actually quite long. This is a separate mission. Oh, okay. There's no space station here. Right, 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 right. I need fuel on this puppy as well. So I need a fuel launcher and an RV for how many, how many peeps? Well, there was one of the scientists I could have used. Anyway, four people. It goes like this. I'm going to put them all together on the same stage. I'm going to put a structural mount here. I'm going to just snap that on there. I mean, if this thing gets caught when it's trying to go up, yeah, it's going to be a problem. And because there are never enough struts, I'm going to put another one. Okay, let's see what kind of disaster this thing turns into. Woohoo! Ooh, it's morning. Awesome. Uh, do I quick save here? No, I don't think so. Well, yeah. Okay. Wish for the best and plan for the worst. I don't know what just exploded, so... Oh, those were the uh, structural mounts. I guess they all hit the ground. This rocket hasn't fired. Where the hell is it? Uh, 
I don't see. Where would the rocket be going? Alright, well, I'm gonna find out after I detach the uh, the Clydesdale. So that's a weird problem. It's like they're just not. doing anything. I've never had that problem before. We have a scribble space program, so it doesn't need to make sense, right? Oh, I've got really good thrust here. I don't even need them. Well, I will need them. Coming up real quick here. Okay. Now they're running? Okay. That's weird. That's so weird. Let's get this. Let's get this party started. But I was fine though because because of that, um, it means I've saved actually a lot of fuel. So definitely not complaining. Okay, now these things are draining pretty quick. Hopefully this is fine. And these are. F oh, these are also draining slowly. Okay. Well, whatever. Let's go out to meet the uh, the flyer. <laughs> Actually, I probably don't want to meet it exactly. By having a shorter orbit, uh, an orbit closer to the planet, actually I can... Going at different speeds from your target actually helps along, uh, a lot easier to find uh, what you call encounters with the other ship. So that's actually really helpful sometimes. Like if you match the orbit, and you're like the opposite side, I mean, it's gonna take so long for you to catch the ship because you're going the same speed, right? You're just chasing each other and never catching up. Because as you go faster, your orbit gets wider, greater, bigger, whatever. that stage. This is a real fat circle, so getting there. Another ten seconds maybe. Then I'll uh, start to get the uh, periapsis. Alright. Well there's no point going wider than the actual uh Thing that I'm trying to do here. Okay, uh, okay, now I'm gonna bring that in here because I don't want to have a different inclination basically. Let's bring that up to match the flight path of the flyer. Let's bring it out. We okay, suck it in a bit. So about my uh, inclinations not too bad. Let's get ready for that orbit. I don't. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to skip some orbits here. No freebies, eh? All right. Okay. I'll just go for the inclination only. That was a nine second burn, that's fine. So I think I'll add some... Uh, add some speed to that. Let's get this in. Let's get the path up a bit. Alright, so 17 second burn, so I just... around. 10 seconds, I'll, yeah, I'll stop the burn. How's my fuel? Eh, it's okay. It's okay. I could actually start redistributing that stuff to uh, make things more efficient. Yep, there 
we go. I think that will make orbit for me. Yeah, okay, good. Cut that back a bit. Cut it back again. And mark. Okay, not bad. Oh, what did I press there? Okay. Nothing exploded, so that's good. So, yeah, let's fill up these... No, they're good. Let's fill up these side tanks. Can I... Ah, okay, so I can get rid of all these stages now. Let's see if it allows me to do the... Yeah, you son of a bitch. Of course. Enable crossfeed. Well, that'll enable me to do it. I don't know. It usually doesn't work because this game is like a glitchy fuel now. So you have to speed up and slow down. Try it again. Still doesn't work because it's an asshole. Let's try it. the out. Like where the hell is the fuel going? <laughs> Probably into here. Who knows? The hell, man. What? Oh, I see my error this time. Okay, cool. I got to. I didn't even know. I didn't even realize this one was still open. Woo. Let's put these side by side so we can actually see them. So I basically want to try to rebalance the fuel because a balanced fuel means a balanced ship. Okay, out we go. Right there. Now let's get rid of that. <laughs> That cluster truck. Yeah, you see, it's still not working because it's stupid. Okay. It's not just me who's the problem, it's also the game. Ugh. I want to punch somebody or something or whoever, like, did this. Because it's real stupid. Really, really, really stupid. So, you used to be able to, like, just transfer things like that, and it doesn't work anymore. There's supposed to be an option in here somewhere, like, that allows, uh... Like, this is turned off. Yet, it still doesn't allow transfers. So... Squad, please fix your damn game. Just allow me to transfer the fuel, because I don't want it out here! Can I transfer it across to this sign? I think I'll try that. Boom, 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 boom. In you go. Fuck you. <laughs> well, one of them works. Whoopie fucking do. Let's enable the crossfeed because the rule doesn't work anymore. All right. Yeah, see? Shitbag. There we go. See? You shouldn't turn game. Like, gaming should be fun. It can be a job, but it shouldn't feel like a laborious activity of figuring out how to do fuel. Yeah, shit. Speed up, slow down, do it again. And then they, you know, it's like I read on some forums, they're like, oh, you can just, like, reinstall your game. It's like, screw off, I don't want to reinstall my game. Okay. Let's get rid of that. And you go, no, of course, right, I gotta speed up and slow down. Gotta select one part at a time, press in, and it works. Does that make any sense to anyone? Whoever screwed up that game code needs to be slapped. I want to reach through the screen and slap ya. There we go. Cool. Oh, wait. It's 1800. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I thought I, like, screwed up my symmetry. Which is a, more of a me problem than a squad problem. Okay. 
Speed up, slow down, and in you go. Speed up, slow down, and in you go. How about now? Yeah, of course. Who would think time warp would have anything to do with fuel transferring? But apparently it does. Uh, it's a bit dark over here, but whatever. <laughs> oh, well, that was lucky, wasn't it? Yeah, it works once in a blue moon. You can, like, negotiate with it. Okay. What? Oh, and sometimes it doesn't. Because it's an asshole. There you go. Now, if I've done this right, there'll be two lateral rockets with the same amount of fuel. 1880 and 1880. Good, 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 good. Okay. i to turn off the cross feed. It's already off. If that makes any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, cool. Whee, there goes my rockets. Now that I'm lighter, I wonder if it will allow me to transfer it right into here. Or is it here? Or is it here? Yeah, whatever. I'm lazy to do all that. That's just... That's just... Ten minutes of my life I won't get back. Okay. I'm gonna try this. See what encounters I get from that. Well, it's moving, not the way I want it, but... I'm gonna bring it in... Oh, wait. Hey, that's not bad. No. Oh. Great, I deleted my own node. How awesome. Okay, let's try that again. So if you, like, drag your node over your own flight path, it just automatically cancels off. <laughs> oh, well, it's not, that is not a big deal. That's not as annoying as fuel screw-ups. Okay, one minute out. I need to be within ten seconds of the the, uh, the node. So the burn time divided by two equals when you start build, uh, start burning. So this will be ten seconds on the node. <laughs> wow, these things are still floating really slowly. I don't have to deploy these, right? Yeah, it's good. Just getting close to the departure time. Gotta be over here so I can get a good view of it. Yeah. I think I'll just go full burn for this. Two, one, mark. Okay, halfway there. 100 meters a second, let's kick that back a bit. 50 meters a second, let's kick that back a bit. Let's do this. We're waiting for this to catch up with that. Alright, so here it comes. And pause. Let me do a tiny burn. Tiny burn. That's fewer mistakes, because then you'd have to turn your ship around or some annoying stuff like that. Just eyeball that sucker. Yeah, I went too far. <laughs> nice view of the planet. It's like a big, huge meteor impact. That's probably why there's no dinosaurs on Kerbin. Oh, let's get rid of this trash here. Unnecessary weight. Okay, to control from here. So you want to control from here because that is what you want to kiss the other Clampatron. And you can actually just. Now, one good thing that they have added is aim camera. So now it 
it should always be around there. Maybe bring it up a bit. Okay. The ship is dead ahead. Or the, uh, yeah, the ship is dead ahead. 60 seconds. That, would that be 30 seconds? Something like that. Anyway. Go to your other ship. Always good to bring in the solar panels. If it lets you... I don't have... I don't have them set up. Ugh. Retract. Retract. So the reason for this is... If the ship scrapes... It won't. It's less likely to take out the uh, solar panels. And that's when you have to like mod your ship in orbit because... Problems like that. Oh, goodness, where is it? Okay, there it is. Double click to target. And off we go. Still got lots of time, 500 meters out. After the main body of the ship is stabilized, then select this as the target. I mean, as the control point. And off we go. Alright, does any of them have RCS? Oh yeah, it has monopropellant. Do I have... I have monopropellant on here. So, I have monopropellant on here, but I don't have it on here, so... Always have to keep double checking your target. So, at 2.2 meters a second, you can slow down using the RCS and control everything from there. Do I have... What? No, oh, stupid. Um, yeah, so I got a bit of my palette in here. I can also transfer that over to the other ship as well. So early on, you can see like there's a little bit of a discrepancy between the target here and the retrograde. So try. Try the target with, I mean, try the RCS with the target on. Get it centered and then quickly turn it off. Because what happens is the ship will have some sway and it will want to, uh, like, compensate for that sway with the uh, SAS and the RCS at the same time and it will actually, like, push your ship further out of whack. Alright, um, I'm gonna quick save because this is. We're in a really good position now. Doesn't mean I'm going to be in a good position later. Okay, let's speed this sucker up. Keep an eye on this as you're speeding up and this at the same time. Because if this goes like out of whack, then you're going to have to do some changes. All right. 100 meters out. I'm going to start turning off the SAS. Bring up this. Keep it in the middle. Turn the SAS back on. Re reacquire the target. And actually, turn off the SAS, turn it back on, and then back up. Turn on the SAS. This will slow the uh, approach. So basically, I just put the uh, thrust this way. Which is easier to do with RCS than having like reverse boosters or something like that. Alright. Keep that as perfect as you can. Get the target back again. As it gets closer, I'm going to slow down to 0 0.3. The angle looks good. I don't need to adjust the roll. Take your time if you want to do it right. How much fuel does this thing take? 25,000. Yeah, okay. Okay, 20 meters out. I think it's time to back up. Let's go to 5. Adjust and SAS on target acquired. Just make sure I am controlling from here, aim here, and SAS off. Back up to the, let's do this approach is pretty stable, so I'm gonna try to do that. Well, oh, this is real slow. <laughs> Docking ports, I, th I can't remember like how much impact they can take, maybe 2 meters a second before, or something like that before they explode. These are weak anyway. They're magnetized though, so that makes things a lot easier. 
Okay. Before the thing uh, gets in contact with you, turn off the SAS on at least one of them, if not both. And back up to 0 0.1. And now you should be able to just. Boom! Perfect docking. Yes. And now, the part I'm really looking forward to transferring fuel. <laughs> oh man. Are they all equally drained? Yeah, there's one. Okay. Doesn't really matter where I drain from, the outside in would probably be a lot better. One of these has disabled crossfeed, right? Make primary docking node, nope. Oh, that's a monopropellant tank, so I'll take the mo monopropellant out of there. There's no need for that. Cool. What else do I have here? Uh, where's my other fuel? Okay, so the middle is full on fuel, and that's good. So let's start filling up these uh, these tanks. This is the most exciting part about the game: is transferring fuel. Even when it works, it's so exciting. It's like you're on a rocket. You're on a rocket roller coaster. Okay. Last one. I'll leave the planet. I mean, I'll leave the uh, fuel in orbit because yeah, I still got a bunch. Eh, not much. Okay, fast mode. So transfer, transfer, transfer. Crew. Transfer you there. Another one. Transfer you in there. Transfer, 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 transfer. In you go. And last one. <laughs> We're getting in trouble so early. Okay. Let's just put out a solar panel. Because I'm going to leave this behind. Let's control from here, aim, and undock. And the undock is correct. Let's put on the SAS. Just want to basically get away from this ship. Yeah, because there's no other way to dock after I disconnect, so. Oh, wrong view, press C. Hopefully I don't hit that rocket. Okay. That's fine. We'll worry about this later. I need to decouple right here. Save it before I make any mistakes. Orbit, yes. Start the engine. Uh, activate engine. Get away from there. Let's go retro. And in we go! Where am I? I don't even know. Okay, there I am. I'm just gonna throw this... Throw this sucker down because... Time's ticking. Crap, don't be an ass. There you go. It should automatically slow down as I go into orbit. All right, here we go. Returning from Eve, the crew finally gets their return vehicle. Let's cut this down to 2,000. Oh, draining fuel pretty fast. I think it's going to be a hot one. Yeah, should be okay for burn. Okay, let's cut this down a bit. Once I start heating up, then I'll uh, put this back on again. Speed up the physics a bit. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, nice slow burn. This is pretty good. Alright. Make sure I'm slow here. I'm going to spin. And then try to get rid of this stage.
Okay, that's good. It's it's getting lost. That's what I want. Let's uh, put you up here. Now I don't have any air brakes or anything like that, so now's the time to figure out whether this thing actually works. Turn the lights off. Here we are, coming in hot. Thousand meters per second. Ready to hit the uh, thicker atmosphere. Oh yeah, slow right down. That's that's the ticket right there. Altitude 1,000. I think well default is good. We drop this below around 450. I think that's when this thing is good to go. Yeah, I can pop these shoots anytime, but I am not going to have a leisurely descent because crew report, just in case I need one. Okay, I'm going to go for a nice sharp air break, maybe around 1500. Send out the shoots. Coming in fast, let me tell you. I don't usually come in this fast. Yes, I'm in a hurry. Ah, there we go. How's my speed? 8 meters a second. Okay, that's actually... It's pretty fast. I think I'll leave this on as a... as a buffer between the uh, these two sections. Speed this sucker up. Turn off the torque from here. Two hundred meters, hundred meters. Let's cut this back. Sixty meters. Let's have a little bit of angle to that. Oh, splashdown! Successful. Nothing destroyed. Nobody dead. Everybody happy. Awesome. Mission successful. Recover the vessel. And these guys came a long, long way. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, give a, uh, a follow or a subscribe. And uh, always feel free to chat. And uh, yeah, shout out to Fizban, who uh, has been hanging out for a while. That's awesome. Good game. Thank you. I hope you're having fun with GTA 5. And thank you for uh, sponsoring the channel and uh, me for the GTA 5. So uh, I'm going to check that game out later. just need to download it. So it's a, it's a hog of a game. Not as big as some, but... About 85 gigabytes, gigabytes, and uh, yeah, after that, I'm gonna try it out. I will have some impact on the stream as well. Have some fun games. Anyways, you all have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, and good night. See you later. Kerbal Space Command, over and out.